Question Everything, Episode 7, almost a year to the day from when I started this podcast and seeing on LinkedIn, Rebecca, she jumped over the hedge and she went for her dream and she inspired me to get started again. So (laughs) Rebecca, welcome to the show. Thank you. I appreciate you and your courage. Thank you. And this episode today is about the fact that fear has to be gone in order order for us to be courageous, right? Like fear has to disappear. Oh yeah, totally, completely vanished. Once the fear is gone, doesn't exist. Then the courage comes, right? That's how it works. If only. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You have to explain the over the hedge thing there, because my last name is Hedges, y'all. Last name is Hedges. It it was just too too much of an opportunity not to bring. So y'all don't know this, but Rebecca was. Hammy on Over the Hedge. She was the squirrel voice actor. Nobody knows this. But... Nobody fact check that, but yes. <laughs> it was my nickname in college. <laughs> and mine was Smiley, so Smiley and Aww, Hammy here. Oh, we out the... here. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I have formed my brand, a lot of my brand around my last name. I don't know how that originated. But I think, like, my grandpa on my dad's side was really big on, like, he showed us our family crest when we were young. And, like, also my mom's side is uh, Native American. Okay. So Hedges, to me, it's, like, fun. And also, like, Hedgehog was a fun nickname. But also, like, family, as much as I've not ever wanted to admit it, (laughs) does really matter and is big to me. Yeah. So Becca the Hedge Photography, if you need a photographer, that's me. Yeah, that's her. So (laughs) right here. She actually helped set up the the beauty of the what you see here. right now. <laughs> no, and that was all you. I'm grateful for it. <laughs> Teamwork. So, it's funny you say hedgehog and you got the sonic blue on. You're right. Gotta da, go fast. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> Collect the rings, all of them. <laughs> Don't hit one of the whatever those <laughs> enemies were. In the I honestly didn't rings. play it enough. I, I I don't I can't say I've ever played it. I know, yeah. not doing my name justice there. I'll, I'll do better. Was, was robbed. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Of course. Seeing your post on LinkedIn and you leaping from Bottle Rocket, one of the places that most designers want to work, want to be a part of. I know Tony Dosat has his podcast. I don't remember the name of it now, but what was the name of it? It is, oh man, cut this out, but it's definitely, (laughs) it's on the tip of my tongue. It's on the tip of my tongue. It's something with launch, blast off, launching. Lift off. Lift off. Lift off. There we go. See, it's there. Got it. We got it. We knew. We knew the whole time. (laughs) So I admire what he does. I admire a lot of people at Bottle Rock. I have so many questions, but, I, but I, have, I have some guidelines I want to stick to today. For the most part, but we can, we can go off the screen. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. So question everything. I, what I'm doing is creating a path to take outliers, outcasts, and catalysts. And I want to show them that the energy they've been fighting so hard to suppress hmm. for other people can be channeled into that leader that they truly are. It's a path that they can take in turn right. to teach others how to do the same. Mm. Now, my vision is to take these outca- outcasts, outliers, and catalysts right. and show them at their core what they're capable of yeah. by yeah. providing a mirror that they can look into, mm. a set of principles that they can follow, a roadmap that they can follow, and a set of principles that they can look by. Excuse me. <laughs> there you go. Now, there are five principles that question everything sits on their courage, integrity, accountability, trust, and authenticity. All right. Now I know <laughs> authenticity is a hard one because how much how much authenticity can you put in this side of the scale without tipping this side? Right, it's right? a balance, yeah. it is, yeah. And the thing that I've learned over this year since I've started this podcast is that the more authentic you are, the more people that you attract. Absolutely. That you actually enjoy and that enjoy you and that love you and you shake the ones off that don't need to be there anyway. Oh, absolutely. Well, yes. Fight, right? Yes. So keeping these principles in mind as you answer these questions, right. I want you to remember that your authentic story is the value of this podcast today. 
exciting, yeah. nerve wracking. Yes. Nerve wracking. It's All true the though. I, yeah, just to add to that, I mean, I definitely learned in college. I would say that vulnerability. That word was thrown around a lot, especially going to a Christian university, right? Small Christian university that I attended in Arkansas, and it was that that word vulnerability thrown around a lot. But I did learn that it is a strength, it is. Um, even though it may be viewed as a weakness to, to others, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I love your, I love the values here. I'm excited to be a part of this, truly. So, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm excited. So I don't know if you know this, but you've been the inspiration for me to get back into this because my last episode where I left off was on imposter syndrome and then right. I let imposter syndrome take over who does for a that? year for hey almost who does that a lot of people this is true you are not alone this yeah is true. yeah I just have to remember that yeah <laughs> so jumping right in mm. I want to ask you a few questions right and the first one I'll start with is what is a relationship in your life that has inspired encouraged or motivated you the most and how do you nurture that relationship yes this was a challenging question for me as someone that is an Enneagram 7, which is very, you know, living life, spontaneity, um, adventure driven, and very fearful of pain, right? So as someone that's an Enneagram 7, but also just an extrovert in general, um, I've had honestly been fortunate to have so many mentors throughout my life. Um, and there's two women that come to mind okay. um, and so the first is a woman named uh, Laura Skaggs or Skagzilla was her nickname <laughs> I gave her awesome. that nickname I'm very proud of it uh, and she loved it to the point it was like on one of her t-shirts in youth group growing up <laughs> Skagzilla all the way shout Absolutely. out um, but yeah so Miss um, Skaggs or Skagzilla I met her when I was, I'm going to say, maybe in eighth grade, um, a woman at the church that I grew up in um, that was willing to challenge and question um, things that were happening within the youth group or, you know, conversations that she observed between us as, you know, teenagers. Um, so that's what I really loved and appreciated about her. Um, and then the other woman that comes to mind was my college advisor, Dr. Marquita Smith. Um, incredible um, woman. Words do not do her justice. Um, and I actually just had a phone call with her, um, not even, I think it was yesterday. Literally yesterday, actually. That is awesome. Um, yeah, and so to answer your question of how do I nurture those relationships, right? I met her um, when I was in this really volatile place um, during my freshman year of college, questioning everything truly. I was like, I went to school as an ed major and quickly yeah. found out I am not a cookie cutter person. I can't just fit in a box. Um, and I was like, um, these ed majors out here, like really trying to make me some type of way is how I felt at the time, right? I was like, I'm not just some girl that wakes up at 8 a.m. every day and eats an apple and then I go on the elliptical. Like, not for me, right? And so right. I truly stumbled into Marquita's office and she radicalized my life um, and taught me so much of what I know today. and. Um, just incredibly grateful for that relationship and so she's the one of the first people that I call whenever I make any career change and so I called her up the other day and she's also in a, in a transitional period of her life but it's it's cool how um, it's like you know a true friend and a true mentor when even if it's been months or even if it's been years you call up the phone and it's like you know. pick up right where you left off. Exactly. My, so. uh, my ex-brother-in-law, we actually mm. had one of those moments. Uh, that was another one of the, right. we were talking before the podcast about right. the people that we lost. And sure. he lost his sister to mm. COVID. Oh, wow. And I hadn't talked to him in years and yeah. just picked up the phone. And it was at my daughter's graduation. Mm. And picked up the phone, called him, and it was like we never had that 10, 12-year wow. break. It's special. Yeah. And it's rare. Yeah. 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 So that is a beautiful beginning to this story. Yeah. And I love, I love to hear when, when someone has a mentor because I, it involves being vulnerable mm. and, and 
letting someone see inside of you and then yeah <laughs> I think that the part that a lot of people miss about mentorship is how it feels to be a mentor mm -hmm. and when you give and give and give and no one comes back and reports to you and then you see they're successful you're like I wonder if it was me or if it was someone else oh yeah so a huge part of mentorship is reporting back absolutely and so when you said how do you nurture that relationship right by being vulnerable I would imagine that that's why right when you pick back up, it's like there was never a break. It's you pick up right where you left off. Yes, I was joking um, this week. I was calling up, truly, actually, everyone that has been a point person in my life. I kept, every, I was like, hey y'all, just on my nostalgia tour, like thanking, <laughs> truly thanking yes. everyone that has led me to this point because I, as you know, um, cliche as it sounds, yeah. truly every step has led me to where I am right yeah. now. And, um, so yeah, I was calling up, um, I worked at a newspaper, a small newspaper in Arkansas, and I had one um, mentor there as well. Um, I was only there for a short stint, but I called up Richard, a uh, photographer, lead photographer, yeah. there because I am I just stepped into a role as a studio photographer. And so I call up Richard, I'm like, hey, he's like, is everything okay? And I'm like, yeah, I just wanted to hear your voice. And I'm like <laughs> crying, which I it's very rare for me actually. And yeah. I'm like, why did, and I thought about that phone, it was just a really sweet phone call. I thought about it afterwards and I was like, why was I so emotional? And it's like, I just have so much um, thankfulness for yes. people like that, that have been instrumental in yes. my life, and even in the smallest increments. But you're right, it takes that phone call. And so many people are nervous to just pick phone, up the phone, yes. The phone weighs so much Yes. when it's time to pick it up. Absolutely. No matter yes. who you are. Yes, yes. Especially when it evolves vulnerability. <laughs> yes, yes. No, that's a good point. Definitely. Yeah. So um, what what was it that prompted you to start questioning everything and what changed when you did? Ooh. Yeah, what a heavy question. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> um, should have known by the title of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, what prompted me? This one was a hard one for me to really ponder because I think... As uh, I didn't know I was an actual journalist until I met Marquita, right? I mean, I had always been an inquisitive kid, but oftentimes I got in trouble for being inquisitive, right? <laughs> yes. yes. So yes. you're like, I'm not, I'm not, you don't want to be labeled as the bad kid. And as a, as a past teacher, you yeah. never want to label any kid any type of way. Right. Um, but some kids, I, would, I used to say this as a teacher, some kids are harder to love, right? And I was one <laughs> guilty as charged uh -huh, uh -huh. because yeah I was a I was a harder to love kid interestingly enough um so I think I couldn't believe that <laughs> no so I think it was definitely um innate number yeah. one um I'm a middle kid too so I think that has a lot to do with it uh, of like got two older siblings one younger brother I was definitely the kid that um my mom would often be like you're not the mom and I was like, I'm not bossy, I have leadership qualities. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which is how I reframe it now, right, for students and my mentees. Um, <laughs> but, I, yeah, I just think for me it's really just been innate. And, and to be honest, it's just, um, yeah, just what changed when I did. It, it was me uh, being willing to be challenged but also having the boldness to challenge. So, you know, often people say like, well, don't dish it if you can't take it. And I've, you know, I've come a long way. I think when I was younger, I was more sensitive. And I, I must still have my sensitive moments, sure. Right. But I'm not gonna dish it if I can't take it now. And so I'm very aware, like, I've developed a thick skin over time. Um, and so that's what's, that's what's changed for me is developing yeah and yes. ha and being willing to you know ease up on the hard exterior when when necessary and, and yes. knowing when to be vulnerable so yeah Do you feel like life is a balance like that all the time all the time <laughs> yeah all the time and fully understand i mean because i'm so thankful for my communication degree actually mm -hmm. because what i knew was that i'm not great at um dictating what i want to communicate through text mm -hmm. but these types of conversations is my strength, right? Yeah. So I, I was glad to be a, a journalism 
major because it forced me to say to learn how do I put what's up in here into writing and how do I better communicate what's in writing in a conversation like this That's so interesting. yeah so in all your questions hmm. would you say that that was your aha moment and if not what was it man Ooh, this is a hard one honestly because I think there's never just one aha moment <laughs> right? right I mean it's not new knowledge right but no. like life is a roller coaster and I, as I was telling you before we started recording I mean I I just had this huge transition right yes. from um, my career path has literally looked like this I mean Every time I f like fill out a job application, yeah. I look at my resume. People, I, I even preface sometimes like, I know that like you have to reframe so many things. I know that my job experience may look very varied, but it's made me very adaptable. And you know, it's all about reframing and marketing <laughs> yourself, right? Yeah. And so for me, um, being a jack of all trades, as I'm sure you can relate, you were talking about your music experience, your audio experience. I mean, you lived in France, you lived in New York. Same for me, right? Grew up in Texas, went to school in Arkansas, then I lived in Tianjin, China, and taught English for a year. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, then I came back, was a crime reporter, then I jumped into photography. So, what? yes, true story. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah, I think for She's me, there's, toolbox. you know, <laughs> it's definitely been several aha moments, but, yes. um, but yeah, like I said, I think um, in those questions, have I had those aha moments? Absolutely. And usually it's been an influential person in my life or most often a really challenging mistake or um, it may be mistakes, not the right word, but a challenging failure. It that feels <laughs> like a mistake in the moment. When Absolutely. You're going and, it. and I mean, hindsight is 2020, 20, right? But I mean, it really is. <laughs> I, got, I got some beef with that statement I... nowadays. Hindsight is twenty twenty. It, like, it used to be a good thing, but like when you think hindsight is twenty twenty, it's like what we're gonna be locked in the house all the time. We can't see people. We gotta put on masks. What is going on? No one can use twenty twenty that phrase without it being triggering. Hindsight like, is twenty twenty one. That's what I was about to say. Truly, truly, because uh, <laughs> this year has been just as eventful. Oh I don't know goodness. about for you, but it has. Yeah. Yeah. I, so 2020 for me was an amazing thing because I had mm -hmm. just broken into the UX. Field oh, wow, wow. And I started the week that everything started shutting down. Wow. So they were transitioning everyone out of the container store oh, and wow. trying to adapt to working from home. It's a company that didn't believe in that. Wow. wow. And so it's like, okay, what do we do? We got to pivot. It was very pivotal. So my right. first day, everyone was like, what a strange Gosh. time to start. Everyone yes. I met that day, what a strange time to start. <laughs> Like, yeah, I've, I've heard that we're, a couple times We're all in the here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really, I mean, the expression we kept using at Bottle Rocket, because I had a teammate that came on the week of who had never even heard of coronavirus. And we were like, oh, wow. you're starting in March and you haven't heard of it? <laughs> like, right? uh, so you're like three months late. Yeah, a little. You're working for a software app development company. <laughs> um, He's like, I'm but... the developer. <laughs> I'm in my corner. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing, it, but the expression we used was like literally like jumping into a river and yes. building the boat in the river, right? The expression that we use, <laughs> so my coach, as we were building our programs, yeah. it's building the bus while it's on the highway. Literally. It sounds scary, but it's really exhilarating. <laughs> I mean, if you like adventure like me, hell yeah. <laughs> right? Honestly. I, I mean, I do I, like I do think I learn better in a sink, sink or swim environment. I mean, that's the only, cause... well, I can't say that's the only, so I've almost devoted my life to understanding introverts, so I'm glad I'm starting this off with an extrovert. Yeah. It's, it's kind of vibe, I vibe right. with introverts too, but Me too. there's some things I just don't understand about them, like why <laughs> they can't just trust and, and jump. Yeah. Like, just come on, enjoy the chaos. Come over here with us in this ambiguity. Anxiety is real. Out. Anxiety it, is real. So... <laughs> 
my personal experience is that God will put me mm. in a place where I understand everyone that I never understood. Yeah. So I've been having anxiety attacks and stomach mm, issues. Wow. And it's been really hard to get back to this. Yes. Because every time I thought about doing anything with the business, right. my stomach was all messed up because wow. I didn't understand my wife. Oh wow! And now she's like, now you understand what I mean when, yeah. when it's time to oh, go she's be introverted. around. Yeah, yes. it's time to be around people. Like we're yes. the the epitome yes. of opposites attract. Right, right. And so trying to comfortably juggle everything that I'm doing. Right. Because I'm my I'm jack of all trades, hands same. and everything. I just yep. I just want to learn. I want to yes, do. Yes, yes. That's how I grow. Yes. And same. her is like, I want to plan. I want to know exactly how everything is going to go. Yes. And that's okay. I'm I'm, right. I'm learning that it's it's okay to be different. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So on the subject of, mm -hmm. of comfortably juggling everything. Right. And, and right. since you you. If you're an extrovert, you, you understand this. So right. how did you comfortably juggle all of your side endeavors that you currently or previously <laughs> had along with your day job? Yeah, yeah. And was there any fear you had to overcome? Oh, goodness. I think that answer is probably obvious, but <laughs> maybe not. Um, but comfortably, I don't think I would say it was comfortable. And I think that's the real answer. I don't know if... Um, yeah, I think growing up in the church, right? Um, in uh, specifically, I grew up in an evangelical free church, which, okay. um, for those who may not know, like there's church structure, right? Low church doesn't mean like a hierarchy; it just means there's less structure. So, high church, for example, is like Catholic churches are called high church because there's lots of structure. You got the sitting up, sitting down. You have, you know, the schedule. Yeah. Right? So it makes sense that my family grew up in an evangelical church, an evangelical free church, because it's more low church, which means, you know, free flowing. Yes, you have like elders. Yes, you have some structure. Yeah. Um, but I think that did, uh, that plays a huge role into where I'm at now. Um, I do love Jesus, <laughs> but I've also deconstructed a lot of my faith um, and decolonized a lot of my faith and had to really do the work and it's not comfortable. No, no. <laughs> and so that's also applied into my professional career as well, right? When I come home from my day job, my nine to five that I have been working for years, right? Different nine to fives. Yeah. But when I was working those nine to fives, I don't get to go home and just relax. I'm fortunate right now to be a childless person, right? Yes. Um, but uh, and not to say that it's unfortunate to have children. But what I'm saying is I have a little more free time probably than, you just know. Just a little. Just a little. <laughs> you know, as they get older, you, you get more free time. But <laughs> the toys get more expensive and the problems get different. Almost like better or worse, they just get different. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, yes, I was in, you know, in this place right now where, um, and Tony was very helpful actually and instrumental in, in identifying that for me. He's like, girl, you got no kids, you got a roommate that's awesome, <laughs> so your rent is low, you know, like yeah. I had a lot of, the, as dumb as it sounds, I mean, the timing was totally God's timing, um, how this um, was orchestrated, and I believe that fully, um, and so for me, it wasn't comfortable, and that's what it is, is being willing to be uncomfortable, um, and all that to say, the reason I brought up the church is that was a huge thing that was preached in evangelical free church upbringing was you got to get outside your comfort zone, right? I mean, that was, I don't know if that was your, your experience at all, but... I did not even know there was a high and low church. Oh, you know, that I blame that on my Christian uh, <laughs> um, university, honestly, because I was hella public school in Allen, right? Yeah. So, like praying inside the classroom what is that um so i had right. i learned a lot from both sides of like being public school in high school and then being in a private christian university which only is because of god that i could afford it i mean and shout out fafsa because i i could not afford that school right um yeah <laughs> so yeah. shout yeah. out fafsa <laughs> shout out shout out uh, applying for scholarships yeah. so yeah <laughs> right free money yep I mean, I work for it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't yeah. free because I got to work for it. Right. But yeah, I mean, it's work. It's work. I mean, it's a different kind of work. Yes. But yes, yes. In the end, yeah. Like looking back, mm -hmm. was it really work, or was <sighs> it in that moment that it felt like a lot of work because of yeah. the fear? Hmm, that's an interesting question, actually, because 
yeah, I think, um, yeah, I struggle with uh, maybe admitting where fear is there or being able to identify when it is fear. I think I made a post even on my Instagram a while back, but, like, I didn't usually pinpoint things as fear when that's really what it was. For me, it was easier to pinpoint, I have anxiety about this. But it, those it two go, itself. yes, and those two go hand yes. in hand. Right, right. Anxiety, so, fear, anger. Oh, absolutely. What is the other one? Um, joy, yourself. disgust. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was right? thinking about inside out. <laughs> anger, fear, oh, joy. <laughs> that was awesome. I love that, was a that good movie. movie. <laughs> uh, no, but that's a great question, and it's true. Yeah, fear, and just like we were saying, fear and grief manifest mm. so differently for each person. Based off your experience, based off your personality, based off what talents God gave you. So, yes. yeah. Oh, yeah. Speaking of the spiritual gifts. <laughs> right. So, that's interesting. So, I, I grew up Jehovah's Witness. Mm. Actually, I didn't. Grow, I grew up the first 13 years of my life. I only knew that church was some place I went where I couldn't eat the crackers <laughs> and I couldn't drink Jesus' Rules. blood. Rules. <laughs> But I had to sit still, I had to be quiet, I couldn't squirm in my chair. I just, it was one time a year I went and I hated this place and I didn't understand it and I didn't know why everyone was so mm. serious. Well, would you identify as a rule breaker? Absolutely. Exactly! <laughs> so it was weird. And so knowing yeah. that there was a high and low church, so maybe mm. I was in a medium. Maybe. But what it, denomination was it, did you say? I think it was Lutheran. Okay. As a child. That's that's more high church, yeah. Which is more rules. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So then you get to Jehovah's Witness. My mm -hmm. mom became a Jehovah's Witness at thirteen. Wow. Because I was a Hellion and I needed it. <laughs> hellion, come on now. And so <laughs> Let's I was, go, demon time. I was listening. I, I okay, okay. <laughs> I was like feeling me hanging. Girl. <laughs> yeah. It, it's the rules. Yeah. They just make you want to run the opposite direction. Oh, absolutely. And I feel like the difference, so I'm I'm more spiritual than I am religious. Hmm. Yeah. I feel like religion is for those of us that are afraid to go to hell, and spirituality is for those of us that have been there. Yeah. I come from a background of addiction and mm. just being in the trenches. Yep. And yeah. if you if you study Jesus' life, you know right. he didn't hang around with the saints. They didn't need him. Nope. Yeah. No. And also, can we just talk about how Jesus is a socialist? <laughs> 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 he was breaking the bread. And who did he give it to? Not just the disciples. No. Everybody. Everybody. And how did that uh, <laughs> that loaf and that fish tr tr just multiply? <laughs> I don't know. It we wasn't can, the... We can go off the <laughs> right. deep end in That's the Bible. That's a whole other podcast. That's another podcast. And <laughs> right. I feel like Jesus is Jesus was a socialist needs to be a shirt. Like that's, that's I would buy it. I, you are going to design it. <laughs> <laughs> it will be on my Etsy shop next week. <laughs> <laughs> Look out for that shirt. <laughs> so I know that there's a lot of buzzwords in our field. And one of yes. them is EQ, emotional intelligence. Mm. Now, I think it's funny. I learned about it coming into this field, emotional intelligence. But when I did my research in emotional intelligence 2.0, it sounded like common sense. Hmm. So I need to know, wow. what are your thoughts on EQ and authenticity? Yeah, no, it's it's interesting you say that. Because I think most rule breakers, which I also identify, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to say that, actually. You know what I'm going to call it? <laughs> We're going to reframe that one Yes, here. let's do this. Um, we are... Um, <laughs> what's the word? Change makers. Change makers. Mm -hmm. Movers. Shakers. Shakers. <laughs> exactly. Catalysts. Yeah. There it is. No, you're right. Truly, actually. Yeah. And that's what it is. Is It's a shame that being a challenger is viewed as a negative, right? And, so, and, and it's a shame, it a shame. that it's more negatively viewed when it's a woman challenging it, right? So not to take it there, but I will because... Take it there. <laughs> All unfortunately, the way there. Well, truly. Um, and so what are my thoughts on emotional intelligence is paramount. I think that... But the reason I'm bringing that up about rule breakers is like usually challengers do have more of the street smarts because soft skills are so valuable um, in every field. It doesn't matter what you do. It is 
it is what takes you to the next level. And soft skills is my only strength. <laughs> Girl. I know my strengths, adaptability, communication, developer, helping other people become their best. Um, Might need to hire her. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> but that, I mean, that is what I know my strengths are, and I, I was able to really identify that at, at a pretty young age. And that's why I think um, I've been fortunate yeah. to be in this uh, in this space yeah. is because it's too often that those are viewed as um, weaknesses. It's not a weakness to have empathy. It's actually one of your greatest assets. It's not a weakness to be vulnerable. It is what builds community. It is what builds change. It is what makes a team, right? And so I was very fortunate in my time at Bottle Rocket. I'm getting the shows thinking about it, truly, because I, I built really great relationships. Yeah. I really did. and um, But it's about knowing how to communicate. The way I talk to you is not the same way that I would talk to my supervisor. It's not the same way I talk to my little brother. It's not the same way I talk to a stranger on the street, right? Right. Um, it's all done with kindness, but it's knowing and matching, I hate to say it, but matching the vibe, right? You have to. You have to, yeah. yes. So, um, so yeah, I, I think that my thoughts on emotional intelligence is that it's undervalued. Mm. Um, yeah. I would agree with that. And so knowing that emotional intelligence, as you said, is just knowing when to match those vibes. Yeah. How do you balance that with authenticity, Ooh. right? Like, yeah. And, What does that mean to you? Why is it important? Yeah. You know, it's funny. I just started this new position at a uh, part-time at this photography studio. Um, and I've been my first... A hey, Photo shoot. Pose. Vogue. <laughs> Strike a pose. <laughs> um, no, but it's uh, it's been fun because I, I just met my, my team of 14 photographers and one of them of course I mean we just completed this first week so we've known each other, only known each other for seven days mm. and at the end of the week I mean you can feel the positivity it's almost tangible mm. you know like you can just you feel it yeah and so it, it is challenging though it's it's knowing you have to know someone's background. You have to ask questions. I mean, truly, you really have to question everything. Because when I met, I'm trying to think of a specific coworker in this moment. Um, but uh, let me think. Tyler, for example. Just, like, exuberant. Um, he's This kid's 19, right? Super tall, beard. You wouldn't know it, right? Yeah. And he's just got, like, the sweetest heart. You can feel it. Yeah. Um, and I started, you know, I started just asking questions. Like, oh, where are you from? Like, you learn so much about people Absolutely. by just asking about them. And people love to talk about themselves. <laughs> it's everyone's favorite subject. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's, what, it's the subject that they know the most. <laughs> exactly. I'm a subject right. matter expert myself. <laughs> It was in this moment that they found out that they were supposed to leave at one. Turns out it was a miscommunication. Oh well, lesson learned. So we gotta wrap up here. Yeah, we gotta wrap up here oh pretty quick. Man. I did not know that. They said they had another person at one. Oh my goodness. Okay. Time flies when you're having fun. So we'll go through these last three questions really quick. Yes. Oops. <laughs> I believe that we all have a mantra, question, quote, or saying that changes mm. our lives forever. Yeah. Mine was do one thing every day that scares you. Yeah. Do one thing every day. Do one thing that scares you every day. Right. Like Eleanor Roosevelt. Right. I did one one thing every day that scares you. So it's helped yeah. me to face fear head on and take my life to new heights consistently. With that said, is there a question, quote, or saying that stuck with you mm. or helped you ever since the first time you heard it? Yes. I don't want to misquote it. Um, so let me look it up. It's a quote by Howard Thurman. Um, and I learned it while I worked at Project Transformation, an incredible nonprofit that's based out of North Texas and that also has several locations now throughout um, the U.S. Um, just incredible work that they do um, to help champion diversity and also helping students um, with maintaining their reading skills over the summer. Um, so really awesome. Uh, program and the okay. quote I'm gonna find it Go ahead. and 
it's so good because it really is the core of like where I'm at now and why I'm there because it's more of a quote about your purpose and knowing your purpose. So it goes, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and go do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Right? I never heard <laughs> that, but I've oh, heard really? versions of it. Yes. And it's basically, it, be you. Yep. Everyone else is already taken. Exactly. And if you are not you, if you're trying to become someone else, you are robbing this world of the you that God made you to be exactly. here and your purpose of what you have to bring to this world. Yes. I love that. Thank you yes. so much for sharing that. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Right. And uh, you have to, well, I would say you have to send it to me. I can. You'll find it. Extract <laughs> it from here. Um, yes. So by far one of my favorite questions. I can't believe we have to wrap up so fast. We, know, we had so much fun before we got on this we were podcast. We are really yeah. kicking it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and we had 30 minutes before, so you know, you would have thought we would have okay. got it down. So by far, one of my favorite questions. Yes. What is one question you think everyone should be asking themselves? Hmm. Yeah, not to repeat that quote, but I think a lot of people do need to ask themselves, what can I improve? right um talking about mentorship what can i improve? <laughs> you know and that's probably something that i was really sharpened for me at bottle rocket is that that idea of innovation but also for me in general i you know was a managing editor when i was in university so constantly looking for how can my team be better how can our newspaper be better so in every role i've had even in China, I'm teaching English. How can my curriculum be better? How can I serve my students better? Um, being in, yeah, being in that, that flow of I feel good, or even if you feel at the top of your game, even if you feel I'm crushing it, you've got to remain humble, and I guarantee you even Beyonce's got stuff that she's thinking, what can I do better, right? I mean, Beyonce is a bad example, but like that's what everyone says. Well, that's she's what I. Still ain't <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like, that's I guess that's the first person I think when I think of like yeah, opulence right. or like Rihanna. Like, Fierce. what can she do better, yeah. right? I mean, I know that successful people and everyone's definition of success is different. Right. But when I think of people in my personal life that are successful, like Dr. Mark Peter Smith, like um. I don't know. I feel like I know so many talented people, right? right? But what are they doing is asking themselves, how can they be better? Um, and so that's, I think, what a lot of people should ask themselves. And knowing your strengths is a huge thing. Um, that is just my favorite thing to do is helping people see their strength and being willing to give constructive criticism you cannot grow without it. No. Um, I've had to learn that the hard way, right? And I was... Don't we all? Yes. And so it's like if you're not willing to look in the mirror and say, I do look good and I, I can see that, right? Or I do feel good. Or even I did this well. There's always something you can improve. And so being willing to, to, um, to identify that, I think that's what everyone should ask themselves. So. And that's a perfect segue. I love that you said... that you know so many talented people and that question how can I improve mm -hmm. be asking yourself that <laughs> until the next episode <laughs> that that brings to mind that whole Nate dog uh, coming real with the next episode <laughs> hey 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 okay back around <laughs> circling back <laughs> <laughs> that is a perfect segue to our mm. last question okay. so who are two people mm. that you could refer to this podcast or this show, whichever mm. you're indulging in, that you know are crushing their goals in life yes. or asking themselves how can they be better? Oh, yeah. I mean, I could probably make a list. I, I'm always just so proud to see my friends winning. Um, when I lived in Memphis, best year, one of the best years of my life, truly. I mean, the creative community there is so unlike anything I've experienced. People in Memphis, when I met them, it's like, from the jump, they got your back. And I've just, it's something else. It's something else. You know, I feel that sometimes in Texas, but in Memphis, it's like, wow, it's family. Yeah. Um, so I have a good friend, um, his name is The Prophet Najee. 
check out his music. Really talented yes, artist. I think he's based out of Atlanta now. Okay. Um, super awesome person in general. The Prophet Najee. The Prophet Najee. And then the second one, <laughs> right. Um, another friend who just recently became a mom. Okay. Her artist name is Sanaya X. She's also a musician, okay. very talented. That girl has bars, and I think she's originally from California, and she's based out of Memphis now. Oh, I'm so Still. excited now. Yes. You're bringing it back to my roots. I'm telling you. Oh, for real, Lynn? Yeah, the I like music. Oh, yes, the yes. Music. I got you, yes. Haven't been to Atlanta yet. Haven't been to Memphis. Me neither. Oh, you've got Now you've Memphis. got me feeling like I need to I know travel. a lot of creatives, for sure. I mean, and I could go on and on about lists of photographers. I got a good friend, Dro, at AP Visuals, based out of Memphis. I've just watched his photography skyrocket. That that man has talent. Uh, that's like my brother, for real. Um, okay. But yeah, Dro. I mean, I, the list goes on and on. So yeah. We'll talk about that offline. I'm gonna get. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna get. I got contacts your people for you. <laughs> on this show. Let's and go. We are gonna question everything. <laughs> yes. Everything. Everything. All the things. All the things. <laughs> so, thank you so much for your Absolutely. time today. Yeah, it's this been great. has been really good and I wish we could have gone the extra 20 minutes but you know what there'll be another time where you'll there be on this be. podcast let's go where you won't have to be working that part time job. I hope a year from today oh. I'm back oh, and we're gonna today, see where we're there's gonna be a studio <laughs> let's go yeah we're, speak we're gonna, it we're speak it into big. existence oh I really don't want to end it this early oh. but you know we we I think you had a solid we got some solid information for you. <laughs> Not for so, sure. Thank you for tuning in, Episode 7. Uh, there will be a link down below in the comments for you right. to give a donation. There. If you yes. want to see this, continue to go because we got to rent out this beautiful room. Yes. But now we know. We learned, right? Shout out. Because we got to learn. To refine. Shout out to Redefined Coffee Redefined. for giving me this nook. It's the nook. Yes. We're in the nook. Grapevine, Texas. Grapevine, Texas. <laughs> so, minimum donation, whatever your heart feels yes. for the value that we provide. Yes. And we will see you next time where episode eight will be talking about vulnerability. Ocho. So, until next time, continue questioning everything. And cue music. <laughs> Dance it out. Right now.